Hi everyone, we're on Unfinished Live and it's a great, great pleasure and privilege to welcome Precious Okayomon. Uh, Precious, I'm so excited. This is our seventh interview. And I was thinking that maybe today we could begin with the only recurrent question in all my conversation. And that's the conversation, actually the question about the unrealized project. And when I asked you this question before, you told me that you have this wonderful unrealized project about the community that is a sustainable installation of future world building, a queer space of people you love and with whom you live together and work on actually building these worlds. Can you tell us a little bit about this idea of future world building? I feel like the only thing we have left to do is build new worlds with new languages of play and joy and endless symphonies. So that's all I'm obsessed with. I'm like, dreams are free. <laughs> They're all we have left to continue us into the future. And we need, we need each other. We need to be entangled with each other. We're not separated. And we need to really think about how we want to move in the new world. Uh, you also say that there is no single artist. You say that's impossible. And actually in one of your poems, the Sky Song, you say no to the ego. Can you tell us a little bit about that? There is, there is no independent self that isn't leaking and um, constantly um, fully entangled with other people. You don't make art independently. You don't do anything independently. We all constantly go outside and we are brushed and touched by anything and to pretend that there's a separate eye that just goes on being eye is impossible. We need, maybe that's the most urgent thing in 2020 is to destroy this concept of eye. We are, I mean, if the world today has shown us anything is that we really need each other and it's urgent and there is no I, <laughs> there's only we. <laughs> Here, so that's we. really urgent for 20, but also for 21 and for, the future, and of course, what is also urgent is love, uh, actually. Can you talk a little bit about love and also what drives you to write poetry? I'm in Arles right now in France, and every time I go outside, there's this special wind that comes and it blows everything away, and it reminds me constantly that the only thing that moves us is love. And I've been writing these poems that are like, songs to the wind they at first they started as sky songs and now i'm writing these wind songs i think everything is just an endless symphony at this point <laughs> i'm just trying to translate um how god is moving me maybe just the earth um it's been nice being here it's been nice talking to nature again <laughs> beautiful so you've you've been writing poems about the, the famous wind in Arles, which is the Mistral, no? The Mistral, it moves me, it moves me terribly here. It moved me to tears the other day. It just blew everything away, almost blew rainbow away. <laughs> you know, Jonas Makers did a beautiful film. He actually tried to film the Mistral. Wow, how do you yeah. film the wind? How to film the wind, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about generosity because it plays a very big role in your work. Generosity also through food, through these amazing dinners you organize. Can you talk a little bit about, yeah, about generosity, but generosity also as a political act? Uh, care is praxis. Honestly, caring for people is like caring for yourself. Food for me is, it has become this way of like, I found it as like healing myself through healing others of like making, a huge meal for people and allowing them to feast with love. I remember this time last year, I was getting ready to make a dinner with for Telfar in Florence. And it was this beautiful, huge, luscious dinner that we called the end of the world. And truly maybe a world did end in the transition portal to this new decade. And it felt that like the only thing that you really could do with other people was care for them like earnestly and open-heartedly as generously and lovingly as you can. And that might be the only thing that could free us um, from whatever primordial fear and anxiety that holds the matrixial drive together. It's also been part of your time in, in Al was uh, a, second, a second lockdown. I just wanted to ask you to tell us a little bit um, your reading list of, of poetry poets you think 
we should all read in this time. Oh, okay, so Alexis Pauline Gibbs, that's a huge duh. I would start with M Archive because it feels like a prayer that you really need to be aware of right now. Um, second, I think it's Dana Ward's Crisis of Infinite Worlds. It's just one of the most beautiful books of poetry of the 20th century, I think. Um, I love, I mean, just because I'm a sucker, I'm gonna say Fred Moten again, because I think um, his Little Edges book is just so romantic. There's something about just sitting there with that book. You could just read it endlessly. Harmony Holiday, love Harmony All Holiday. She just made a, um, a vinyl album. I think enough poets don't get to record audiobooks and musical audiobooks at that. So she just recorded a poetry book that's a song and jazz and her poems. It's just honest, it's, I'm such a fan. Um, also, Sean Henry Smith's Wild Peach. I just started that and it's been absolutely delightful. Absolutely. It's, um, it feels like I'm sitting in the hot sun and it's lightly burning me, but it's fine. I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, so it's like, that's a rough top five. During the lockdown, I think I've also been thinking a lot about rituals and uh, Andrei Tarkovsky actually said, the filmmaker, that we live in a world which is too bereft of rituals and we need to think about introducing new rituals. So I was kind of wondering if you can tell us a little bit about your, your daily rituals. My daily rituals that keep me, um, that keep me here is that in the morning I, use, I wake up and I do my stretches and then me and Rainbow take a walk and we, we talk, we talk to the wind <laughs> we talk to the sun, um, we sing. I think it's important every day to go outside and deeply listen to everything around you and be present in that. And that's like one of my things is that I have to go outside no matter what it is in the first hour I wake up, walk around and and literally talk <laughs> to the space around me and just be be with it. I also think it's very important to, to meditate. I've been meditating a lot, even if it's like 20 minutes a day, it's really important I think for artists and also for everybody to just sit with yourself and listen to what you need because that really helps you remember what your needs are and also remember what your desires are and be more in touch with your dreams. Also, I think it's important to write down your dreams. I started a dream journal for this whole time I've been in Aura and I remember, and I, this is also like, it's become another unrealized project for me is that I think it's important that everyone be communing about their dreams and talking about them and trying very hard to remember them. And I feel like it would be really nice to have a dream archive. So here we have a few questions, unfinished questions from our listeners, from our participants. Uh, and I'm going to read you a few. So Precious, the first question is, what are you the mirror of? Hmm. Well, I'm a mirror of everyone around me. Everything I love is everything I am at the end of the day. <laughs> it's really simple. Mostly rainbow. <laughs> Me and rainbow echo each other. Is and rainbow here? Yeah, look at him. I'm going to break him over. He's taking a nap. This little poodle. This is what I'm aware of. Oh, wow. Hi, Rainbow. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so great. So the second question we received from uh, the participants, from the listeners, uh, are you free? Mm. Well, freedom is constant flight and constantly being aware of the fact that you're flying with everyone you love. And maybe I think it's hard to be completely free, but I feel at peace, which is maybe the next step, freedom. <laughs> next question we received, another unfinished question from one of our listeners. What are you protecting? Mm -hmm. What am I protecting? Everyone, everything, 
everyone I love <laughs> and everyone I don't love too, which is nobody because I try really hard to love everyone. <laughs> Great. Next question is, how do you keep your heart open even when it hurts? You have to be really open like the wind. And you have to let things blow through you and move you. And then you're in this constant state of always being open, even if it hurts, so you can be moved and tossed around. And then you're able to breathe a lot deeper, so much deeper. And then you keep loving even deeper. <laughs> That's such a wonderful conclusion. Precious, thank you so, so much for this conversation. Thanks to Unfinished. This is a rendezvous of question marks. Thanks.